you started out as with performance. Are the photographs were before performance or performance first and then the photographs? I, I think they may be arrived together. I mean, the, the the end product in the gallery was always the photograph to start with, but the the process of making those photographs was quite performative. I was uh, using my own body, and there were self portraits of of my marking things onto my skin. So I guess it was very performative, but I was maybe in denial at that time and considered them just photographs. Yes, I, I read in, a, in an interview that you said you were maybe too shy, really, to perform before public. True? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It took me a long time. I, I certainly was not performing during my art school, um, and it took me a little while even to move to video to to show movement and 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 rather than the end product of photographically, and then a step after video to do performance. So would you say that the video work is closer to performance or closer to the photograph? My current video work? Yeah. Oh, that's that's tricky. Um, I think, again, both. I mean, I think my video works are very performative. Um, so, they're, you know, they, they, they always have the body and, and movement and uh, in terms of culturally, choreographically. Uh, but then... The more the more recent works that I'm making are also I'm also seduced by the image and and interested in um, achieving photographically I guess in the film cinematography uh, the, where the what I was achieving in the in the photograph so I, I suppose in production value um, as those increase a little bit in my work I, I guess I'm aiming for what I was achieving in my photography early on. Uh, but I think the performative aspect has, has always been there. Most of the work is about um the playing with fiction uh but but based or rooted in the in the real life of somebody who is not in his place in a certain sense so there is, is a misunderstanding of the behavior and of the of the person himself is that true yeah i i suppose so um i, I guess i'm interested in creating um images or situations that we feel we might recognize um, and but often from we, we might recognize him from without lived experience of it so there might be you might st in, a, in a stereotypical way perhaps or from a distance and but when you when i've created something which is usually a cultural image or a cultural person or, or family or whatever once the viewer has accepted that image and then i like to pull the rug out from the view from the audience's feet and to and to twist or change what the the understanding of that image and then once that has settled into something which is understood by the viewer i like to twist it again um so there's a, almost a, a constantly changing um um uh, understanding of what the people might be in the, in, the, in, the, in the frame for you born in england i think in bolton um yes 
is is there the 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 English the pop culture the superheroes for instance it more are they stronger in your head than the what you inherited from your parents the Indian culture because you have never lived in India correct correct yeah I mean I, I grew up in a pretty Indian household um, you know so culturally my home life was very very Indian if you if you like in terms of what we ate the way we behaved how we spoke um, and then outside the house was was very English in some way so there's always the two there um, I think the influence of the pop culture was certainly a strong one for me probably because um, the the Indian side um, if you like, was something that I was that I felt marginalized by, and um, because of the racism where I grew up, I, I was I, when I was younger, I was quite ashamed of the Indian side of my life, and so I would try to minimize it and to I, I wouldn't embrace it. Um, whereas the superhero culture and the pop culture, if you like, is something which felt empowering. It's something which um, is. It, its mechanism is to make you feel powerful uh, in, in some ways or for you to imagine yourself as powerful. And so that, that was a very um, attractive prospect, I guess. This difference of somebody heroic and, and the reality is also in a certain way in, in the film we are showing where there is a difference between what a wedding ceremony, which might be also a fight ceremony or something, a, a choreography of a fight. Could you explain a little bit how you, you found that, the genesis of it? Sure. Um, well, in, in relation to the ceremony or just generally the film? To the film project. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, well, th this film is, um, I guess, a culmination of lots of recurring interests uh, in, my, in my practice. Um, so, for example, I've always been interested in uh, the body and what it, communicates it as a vessel cultural ho holder if you like um, and and so I've also in, in term I've always been interested in like um, physical things like martial arts uh, and then later in life um, contemporary dance um, and sign language all of these different ways of communicating physically through the body um, and so they play a part in this film and then um, in terms of the um, ceremony, if you like, um, I was interested in the something a, a signifier that we would all recognize. Um, you know, despite no matter what culture you're from, that you you recognize that uh, it might be a, a wedding ceremony of some sort uh, for this play, for this um, film to take place. And in, in the, the the start part one of the starts of the project was I wanted to explore. Kung Fu, the martial arts, and sign language, and um, find a place to workshop them together. And, you know, one's a martial art, one is a language, so you can't compare them like for like. But I was interested in exploring that. So uh, I've been doing that with a collaborator of mine, um, who's a deaf writer and artist, and also um, another a collaborator, Chirag Luca, who's a bike choreographer. And we, we started with the the the... Um, physical language uh, around which we kind of built uh, built this narrative um, and then it, I guess a lot of things that happen in my work today also are about transformation um, about you know cultural transformation social transformation and in in don't look at the finger in this film some of the transformation is, to, is it partly happens through the costumes um, through part of the rituals where they turn from something we recognize or we feel that we might recognize to be more traditional West African uh, outfits, for example, into something that feels much more um, East Asian, uh, for example. Um, and, and then it was also important in a way, I was interested in this work of, of, of having lots of different marginalized identities, if you like, or marginal practices in the work, whether it's to do with deafness, blackness, Asianness, Africanness, all of these things, but to be able to weave them in a way that could feel recognizable or that could feel familiar um, through this kind of big language of Hollywood, um, the way that the cinematography and the, the costumes and the music work.
what would be uh, because our our general uh, topic of this year's edition is uh, forbidden beauty. What would be the, 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 the definition of beauty in relation to this last film? Mm. Because it, it looks very beautiful. It looks like a, a ceremony much more. The, the chore choreography, whether it's violent martial arts or a wedding, yeah. has a grace which is quite beautiful. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And, 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 you know, that is something that I'm really interested in, that I'm seduced by, that I'm interested in making. Um, and I think the, the, the hidden beauty, if you like, or the lesser seen beauty for me is all of the cultural specificity of different cultures and languages. Um, and, and in particular for me, the marginalized Uh, cultures such as um, uh, deaf culture or um, West African culture or Indian culture or Asian culture, the, the things that are not part of the, um, the, the dominant uh, mainstream, if you like. And, and these are the things that I'm kind of um, uh, weaving together with this bigger recognizable language. So I, if anything, it's kind of trying to make those things a bit more visible somehow.